Good morning. Thank you for joining in. This is the Kehila Chari Torah Daily Halacha Review and uh, Sfirat Omer Counting for Monday, May 10th. Today is the 43rd day of the Omer. Hayom Shlosha Ve'arba'im Yom Shehem Shisha Shavuot Ve'yom Echad La'Omer. We're following along in our uh, day-to-day uh, steps to acquire Torah. So uh, number 43, item number 43 in the Mishnah's list of 48 ways to acquire Torah, Shomea Umosif. Shomea Umosif. This means to listen to words of Torah and add your own thoughts. The reason for this is that when a person is able to bring their own insights, their own chidushim to the table, it's a sign that they truly understand this piece of Torah. Uh, Reb Chaim of Volozhin explains that the essence of Chidushe Torah is not necessarily developing an entirely new thought. In fact, any deeper understanding or further clarification of a subject falls under this category of Chidush, uh, newness, something uh, insightful. We uh, have been talking about uh, some of the laws of uh, Yom Tif, particularly uh, first day of Yom Tif as it pertains uh, to second day. What are we allowed to do and not to do on the first day of Yom Tif, uh, uh, so as not to prepare for the second day of Yom Tif. The last two points Kitzur Shulchan Aruch makes here, uh, one which not so uh, practicable in our times, but interesting to know nonetheless, and the other more so. Uh, here are the last two points. Milk, which a non-Jew milks on the first day of Yom Tif in the presence of a Jew, may be used on the second day of Yom Tif. If the milking was done on Shabbos, and Sunday is the first day of Yom Tif, we are for- it's forbidden to use on Sunday. Milk that was milked on the first day of Rosh Hashanah is also forbidden on the second day, and also on Shabbos if it follows immediately. So nowadays we are buying our milk uh, ahead of time. Uh, it sits in the fridge uh, for a while and it's ready for us for our uh, morning coffee or whatever it is on Shabbos and Yom Tif, uh, but nevertheless interesting to know. A little bit more uh, applicable to our uh, uh, year in and year out practice, the last point he makes here, wicks, uh, candle wicks, you know, for lighting, uh, lighting the, uh, licks, the licht. Uh, wicks that were lit on the first night of Yom Tif and were extinguished may be lit on the second day of Yom Tif. In other words, they, the, the wind blew them out. But on the f- two days of Rosh Hashanah, it's forbidden to light a wick on the second day that was extinguished on the first day. It's forbidden to light them even at the other end. However, you're allowed to handle them in order to remove them and replace them. Uh, the same law applies when Yom Tif occurs the day after Shabbos. Okay, those are the uh, last two points he makes about uh, the first and second day Yom Tif. Uh, tomorrow, Emir Tzashem, will start speaking about uh, the laws of rejoicing on Yom Tif. Uh, there is a section here about Eruv Tavshilin, uh, what to do when uh, Yom Tif goes into Shabbos. That doesn't apply to us uh, this year for Shavuos, or I believe in the fall uh, for the Yom Tov and for Rosh Hashanah, Sukkot, and Simchas Torah. So we will leave that for another time, and we will touch uh, on uh, laws of uh, Simchas Yom Tif, laws of rejoicing on Yom Tif. So please join us then. Have a good day.